New post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Nick, look out! Quick, Betsy, down on the floor. Come back here. Come out back, Nick, you dirty lousy... Nick, they pushed us to the curb deliberately. I saw them. Crazy fools, they could have killed us. You're not kidding, driver. Look at those windows. Hey, those ain't... Oh, yes, they are. They're bullet holes. And now, the case of the great impersonation. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. When Jack Blaney was police reporter on the Morning Blade, he and Nick saw a lot of each other. But they lost touch when Jack moved to Center City as city editor of the Daily Crusader there. And then, late one night, Nick received a long-distance call. Hey, where are you calling from, Jack? Center City? Yes, I'm still at the newspaper office. Everybody else went home hours ago, but I'll be here until morning, except that I'll probably have to run out for cigarettes in a little while. Big story coming up? Oh, plenty big. I'm going through the morgue, checking every crime story here for the past ten years. Now, what's the big idea? Nick, there's a gang in this town that the local cops haven't been able to touch. They don't even know who's at the head of it, but I know. Anybody I ever heard of? I don't want to mention names over the phone, but they're mixed up in everything. Gambling, stolen cars, black market, building materials, and now counterfeiting. Well, look, Jack, you better get in touch with the Treasury Department then. Counterfeiting's their job. No, no, I want to get the evidence myself first. This is really big stuff, Nick. And if I swing it, it'll give me a national reputation as a newspaper man. But, Jack, if you know so much about their operations and plans and you know who's at the head of the outfit, you're... I haven't any proof, Nick. I just happened to overhear a scrap of conversation between a couple of drunken mobsters in one of our local gin mills. They mentioned their boss's name, and then I heard something about Arlie Grinner, and then... Arlie Grinner? Yeah. He's going to supply the counterfeit money, and the mob here will distribute it. Look, Jack, take my advice, will you? Call the Treasury Department. I'll make a bargain with you, Nick. If you'll come out here for a few days and help me get proof to back up what I know, I will call them before I take any action. Now, wait a minute. Oh, it means a lot to me, Nick. Breaking this story will put me ahead ten years in the newspaper game. I'll have offers from... Okay, okay. Patsy and I'll catch the next train. Oh, swell. Well, now I'll get back to work. So long, Nick. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. Right. Shut off the recorder, Benny. That's all there is. They hung up. That sneaking rat Blaney hiring a private eye from the big town. Oh, when the boss hears this record, he'll blow his top. Well, the boss must have figured something was up or he wouldn't have had us tap Blaney's phone wire. Hey, I hope he thinks of some way to keep this Carter guy from coming here. I heard Don't about him. Don't worry and... about Carter. When his train pulls in tomorrow, we'll be ready for him. But tonight, we're going to take care of Mr. Blaney. <laughs> Come on, Patsy. Here's a cab. Say, Nick, Center City's quite a place, isn't it? Oh, sure. Almost 100,000 population. Golly. Hey, get in, Patsy. Yeah. Where to, brother? The morning crusader officer. Check. Hey, there's another cab around. I'm in a hurry to get to the Hotel Bradford. Be all right with you if I... Oh, well, that's all right. We don't mind sharing oh, a I, ride. Uh, never mind. I think what? I see another cab coming now. Thanks. Well, if she can see a cab coming, she has better eyes than I have. I think she changed her mind when she saw us, Patsy. What's the matter? Do we have leprosy or something? You know who that was? No, who? Arlie Grinner's girl. Arlie? Her name's Connie Mills. Oh, well, no wonder she didn't want to ride with us if she recognized you. She probably did. I've run into her several times around New York. I wonder what was in that bag she was carrying. Hey, buddy, you know many people in New York? Yes, quite a few. Why? Any theatrical producers? Oh, yes, a couple. Hey, how about give me a letter of introduction, huh? Well, I don't know. I'm talent, see? Undiscovered talent. One of them stars of tomorrow. Yeah? Listen. Am I mortified? Am I burned up? I'm standing on the street corner with Don Priago by my side, in person. When up comes this discourteous individual, he steps up on my toes, puts a penny in my mouth, and tries to weigh himself. Ha cha cha cha. I got a million of them. I got. That was Jimmy Durante, see? Oh, uh, yes, yes, we see. Uh, how about this? 
Now, you listen to me, young Dr. Killjoy. I'm an old man. Maybe I'm not the surgeon I used to be. But at the same time... Hey, watch I out for that truck. Get that hack little wap along! Yeah, shut up. And I was Lionel Barrymore. Driving the truck, you mean? Nah, that's the impersonation I was doing. <laughs> I can impersonate anybody. Maybe you like to hear Edward G. Robinson. Oh, not while we're in this heavy traffic. I can drive this hack with my eyes closed. Oh, don't argue with him, Nick. He'll try to prove it to you. From now on, I'm running this mob, see? Yeah, me, little squeezer. You're taking orders from me, see? Yeah. If I have to put a hole in somebody's head... Look out! Quick, Matthew, down to the floor. Come back here. Come on back, oh, you Nick, dirty... Nick, pushed it to the curb deliberately. I saw them. Oh, the crazy fools, they could have killed us. You're not kidding, driver. Look at those windows. Hey, those ain't... Yes, they are. Bullet holes from a machine gun. Office, Nick. See on the door, Jack Blaney, city editor. The girl said to walk right in, but did you notice how oddly she said it? Yes, as if she were frightened or something. Well, maybe Jack can explain. Yeah. Hi, Jack. Well, how are you, Mr. Connor, Miss Bourne? I'm Chief Ramsey of the Center City Police Department. The police? When the receptionist but... phoned to say that you were here to see Mr. Blaney, I recognized your name, so I asked her to send you in without saying anything. Anything about what, Chief? About the fact that Blaney was murdered at 3 o'clock this morning. What? Murdered? Well, that was only a couple of hours after he phoned me. How did it happen? A couple of hoodlums waited in front of this building with a machine gun. Oh. Your local boys seem to like machine guns, Chief. They used one to welcome Miss Bowen and me just a few minutes ago. Huh? They did? Well, what in the Sam Hill... I demand action. I demand it. My city editor's been shot down on the street like a dog. Like a dog, mind you. Uh, Mr. Hanford, uh, these are some friends of Blaney's from out of town, Mr. Carter and Miss Bowen... Uh, Mr. Hanford is the publisher of the Daily Crusader. Hello. Howdy, glad to see you. Sorry to have to meet under such tragic circumstances, but I'm throwing every resource of this paper behind the hunt for these mad dogs. Every resource. Any idea why Blaney was murdered, Mr. Hanford? Well, of course I have. Of course I have. The Crusader's a newspaper with a mission. A mission. That mission is to stamp out crime in Center City. And you think Jack was killed simply because he was your city editor? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh. We have a well-organized criminal element. Well-organized. Not they're afraid of the Daily Crusader. Afraid of us. They know we'll get them someday. Uh, the Daily Crusader and the police department work pretty close, Mr. Carter. As a matter of fact, Mr. Hanford here was directly responsible for making me chief of police. Mm, you bet I was. I have influence in this town. Influence! I wanted a police chief who was honest. Hey, even if he isn't smart. Uh, now, Mr. Hanford... That's the truth, Ramsey. Everybody knows it. Everybody. But by the eternal, if you don't clean this town up now, clean it up, I say. Well, I, I'm trying, Mr. Hanford. You know that. And if Mr. Carter will help out... As far as Jack Blaney's murder is concerned, you bet I'll help out. And I think I know just where to start. I'm sorry, sir. There's no Connie Mills registered at this hotel. <sighs> But, Nick, she certainly said the Bradford Hotel. Maybe she's using another name, Patsy. Oh, yeah. Uh, look, clerk, the young lady I mean probably came in about an hour ago. She has red hair. Hannah red hair. Was wearing a green dress, a green and white hat, and... Oh, I remember her. But she checked in under the name of Turner. Uh, wait till I look at the card. Oh, using an alias, huh? Uh, here it is. Miss Jean Turner, New York City. That's probably the one. You'll find her in room 1018. Thanks. Come on, Chief. Yeah? Hello, Connie. What's the idea? What is this, a pinch? Is it, Mr. Carter? No, Connie. We'd just like to look around and ask you a few questions. Well, uh... Just a minute. Nick, if she locks that but door... She won't get it locked. There. Now, look, Connie. Watch her. Watch her. She's trying to get a gun out of that suitcase. No, no, it's a package of something. Keep it between her and that window, Chief. I'll head her off yeah. on this one. Oh. <coughs> uh, let go. Let go. Come on, Connie. Please. Let's see what you're so anxious to throw out the window. If I had a rod, I'd teach you to rub out the lake. There. Here, Patsy, see what's inside this package. All right, Nick. Hold still, hold still, Connie. Be a good girl. Well, good gravy, it's money. Why, there must be a couple of hundred thousand dollars here. And I'll bet every dollar of it's counterfeit. Connie here is associated with a counterfeiter named Arlie Grenner, Chief. Huh? Treasury men have been trying to prove something on him for months. And Grenner had a deal on with the head of the gang here in Center City. 
Jack Blaney told Nick about it not two hours before he was killed. Why, I figure it. This gang leader found out that Jack knew about him, and that's why Jack was killed. Come on, sister. Who are you bringing this stuff to? I don't know. You don't know? How could you deliver it if you didn't know who it was going to? I won't say another word till I see my lawyer. Okay, Connie. Lock her up, Chief. And keep her arrest quiet as long as you can. Now, see here. Shut up, sister. Mr. Carter, I'd appreciate it if you'd come along to headquarters with us and bring that phony money. Sure, glad to, Chief. Patsy, you better stay here. And if there's a phone call, pretend you're Connie and stall until I get back. Right. Now, don't let anyone in but me. I'll be back in 30 minutes. <laughs> Almost 30 minutes since Nick left. He better be here any minute now. Nothing's happened. Oh, there he is. Coming, Nick! Oh. Gene Turner, ain't it? Why, uh, uh, why, yes, yes, I'm Gene Turner. We're from the boss. Well, well who, who do you mean? Never mind who we mean. You got the stuff? The, the stuff? Oh, oh, the you The funny money, baby, the yeah. funny money. Oh. Ready to pay off in real dough. Yeah, 50 grand. Show us, Slim. Uh, yeah. Does that convince you that you're talking to the right guys? Well, I, I... You see, boys, there's been a little hitch. Have you got the stuff or ain't you? Well, uh, well, not right now. But if you'll come back in half an hour... Uh, what kind of a runaround is this? You knew we'd be here for it at 9 o'clock tonight. Oh, yes, yes, yes. But, uh, look, come back in half an hour and I'll explain. I'll explain sooner than that, baby. Well, Get but, your hat. But... My hat? Yeah, you're gonna explain to the boss in person. Afraid to resist and hoping she can continue to carry out the bluff, Patsy has no choice but to leave the hotel with the two gangsters. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now back to The Case of the Great Impersonation. Today's adventure with Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. After sending a telegram to the nearest office of the Treasury Department, informing them of the counterfeit money found in Connie Mills' luggage, Nick returns to the Hotel Bradford, expecting to find Patsy waiting in Connie's room. Finding the room empty, he goes to the hotel desk. Miss Bowen? Yes, Miss Bowen. Oh, the young lady who came in with you? Yes, yes, have you seen her? Why, she just this minute left with two men. With two men? Well, they must have been coming down the elevator as you went up, Mr. Carter. What do they look like? Well, they were rather hard-looking, flashily Which dressed. Which way they go? And, oh, through the street door. Perhaps you can still catch them. It hasn't been more than a minute since they left. Howdy! there. You looking for a cab? Yeah. The girl who was with me when you picked us up at the station. You see her just come out of the hotel with two men? Sure, they got into a black sedan. Uh, that's it. Up at the corner, waiting for the red light. Oh, there they go. The light's changed. Catch up with them. Don't let them get away. Anything is safe, pal. Hey, you really going to introduce me to some of them theatrical producers? Catch that car. I'll introduce you to every producer in New York. Brother, you made a deal. Hey, you know what I forgot to do for you before? Cary Grant, listen. Never mind the impersonations now. Catch that car. What do I do with them if I catch them? Force them over to the curb. Hey, look, I'll get in trouble with the curb. Do what I tell you, will you? This is a matter of life or death. Okay. Okay, chum. Now? Yeah, shove them over. Then stop in front of them so they can't get away. Right. Here goes. Ah! <laughs> of this young man? Why, you alone in this car? Certainly I am, but don't think I'm helpless. I'll scream for the police. I'll... Look here, driver. I thought you said Patsy and those two men were in this car. Uh, sweet pal, I thought it was this one. All these big black sedans look alike. I'm sorry. Tell me about it later. Sorry, madam. It was all a mistake. Well, all the idiots... Driver, take me to police headquarters right away and see if you can impersonate a cab driver in a hurry. <laughs> Well, Boss is going to be mighty interested in why you ain't got that dough. And whatever your reason is, it had better be good. But I, I told I'll you save that. Save it for the boss. Yeah, right through this door. Okay. Hey, boss, I brought. Slim, I told you and Benny never to come here to my home. I told you that. Mr. Hanford. What's she doing here? This is the girl Arlie Granite sent with his stuff, boss. But she ain't got it. And she acted so funny about it, we thought you'd. You want... fools. Fools, both of you. So you're the boss, the great reformer, the man who fights crime. Shut up. Why, Shut you... up. Is something wrong, boss? This isn't the girl Grena sent. She's Nick Carter's assistant. 
His assistant, you hear me? But we went to room 1018 at the Bradford like you told us, and she said her name was Jane I don't Turner. care. I don't care what she said. So you're the gang leader Jack Blaney found out about. And it was you who killed him, a you dirty... A regrettable necessity, my dear. A regrettable necessity. Now I'm afraid we must take the same measures with you. What? The same measures. We got to bump the dame off, too? Oh, no. Hey, look, no. boss, this ain't so good if she's Nick You do as I sister. tell you, exactly as I tell you. Perhaps we can make it appear an accident. Oh, no, please. Please, what no. kind of an accident? I don't know yet. I'll have to think it over. I have to think it over. You wouldn't. Take her out to the old uh, place. Wait for a call from me. When I make up my mind. Okay, boss. Come on, Let baby. Me. We're going right. Let me go. I'll, I'll scream. I'll raise the whole neighborhood. Oh, you won't. I, I, uh, Too bad I had to slug your sister. Now you won't get no chance to scream ever. got Patsy. How do you know? The desk clerk said she left the hotel with two hard-looking characters. She wouldn't have stirred out of that room until I got back unless she'd been forced to. Maybe we'd better go see Mr. Hanford. Who's uh, chief of police in this town? You or Hanford? Why, uh, I am, but him and me always work together, and I kind of depend on well, this him. This time, let's depend on the police force. I want to talk to the men who know the districts where this gang might have a hideout. Oh, sure, Mr. Carter, anything you say. Allenby, send Myerson and Dunphy in here on the double. Sorry if I seem impatient, chief, but... Anything happens to Patsy... I know how you feel, but I still think we ought to talk to Mr. Hanford. I was just reading the editorial he wrote in tonight's paper all about the Blaney killing. Yes, yes, I'm sure it's a fine editorial. Oh, you bet. A real tearjerker, too. About how Blaney was working late, and when he stepped out to get a pack of cigarettes, he... What? Guy... Huh? Let me see that editorial. Oh, sure, here. Yes, Chief, you're right. I think we should go see Mr. Hanford. Good. I'll get a squad Don't car. Don't bother. I have a taxi waiting outside. Come on. See, what's the meaning of breaking... Look here, Hanford, I'm going to give you just two minutes to tell me where your thugs have taken Miss Bone. And if you don't tell me, I'll wring your scrawn of your neck. What? No, no, no. Look, Mr. Carter, I know you're excited, Excited? But... I've gone way past that, Chief. The gang leader you weren't able to find is a man who's been your unofficial advisor, Mr. Cyrus Hanford. You're out of your mind. Out of your mind. You listened I... in on Blaney's phone call to me last night, Hanford. You heard him tell me he knew who was behind the gang, so you had him killed before I could get here. That's a lie. I didn't even know he made such a call. Take a look at this editorial you wrote in tonight's Daily Crusader. It says that Blaney was leaving the building to get a pack of cigarettes when he was murdered. There wasn't anybody else in the building he could have told that to. So how did you know his reason for going out at that time? Well, I was only guessing. Only guessing. Mighty good guessing, Mr. Hanford, because Jack told me over the phone that he was going out for cigarettes soon. What about it? Listening in on that phone conversation was the only way you could have known about those cigarettes. And when you wrote the editorial, you unconsciously proved your own guilt. Hey, I never even thought of Mr. Hanford. But it is kind of funny that every time we'd plan a raid on one of the mob's gambling houses, they seem to know about it ahead of time. Do you think you can go into court with any such ridiculous, trumped-up evidence? They laugh in your face. Laugh in your face. Your two minutes are up, Hanford. You gonna tell me where Patsy is, or do I... I if you let him lay a hand on me, I'll... He said he was gonna break your neck, and I hope he does. Where is she? Where? Where? Don't lose me. I, I, I don't know. Where? I'm... He'd, he'd, he'd kill me. That's swell by me. Don't, don't hit me, Carter. Don't, don't. don't. I'll, I'll talk fast then. I'll tell you. She, she, she hasn't been hurt at all. Not hurt at all. Let me use the phone. I'll, I'll have her here in a few minutes. Okay, go ahead. And to think that old buzzard is making a sap out of me all the time. I'd like to take a poke at him myself. Uh, hello, hello, Slim. This is the boss. Yeah, the boss. You, you know what I said about the girl... About uh, you and Benny putting the girl uh, out of the way? Yeah. Well, uh, do it now. Do it fast. Kill her. Kill her. As Hanford shrieks the order for Patsy's death, Nick and Chief Ramsey grab frantically for the phone, but too late. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now for the conclusion of The Case of the Great Impersonation. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. Pretending he is phoning his thugs to bring Patsy back unharmed, Cyrus Hanford gives orders for her to be killed. Kill her! Kill her! Why, you dirty... Uh, save her now if you can. You murdering old devil! Uh, I... uh, maybe you can prove I gave the orders to kill Blaney, Carter. Maybe you can. Uh... But they can only hang me once. And I'll have the satisfaction knowing I've paid you for your meddling. Oh, oh, gosh, Mr. Carter, if we only knew where they are, I could call out the radio cars. I'm taking her to a farm, 15 miles out of town. 
By the time your radio cars get there, it'll be too late. Go ahead and call out your men, Chief. I'll be right back. Where are you going? I want to see a taxi about a man. <laughs> gonna do no you go good to fight, sisters. Sure. You keep twisting around like that, and it might take two or three slugs to do the job. No, you can't. Just one bullet right between the eyes. No, no. That's the phone, Slim. Well, so what? Well, nobody be calling out here but the boss, would they? No. Okay, I'll get it. Hang on to her, Benny. You bet. <laughs> you kill me, Nick, if I know. You'll run your down. Hush! Yeah. Uh, hello, uh, Slim. Uh, this is the boss. Uh, this is the boss again. Yeah, boss? Is the girl still all right? Is she, is she all right? We're just getting to that little matter now, boss. Well, everything's changed. It's all changed. Carter's found out about us. He's found out. Oh, we've got to get out. We've got to get out fast. Okay, but what about the dame? Bring her with you. We're taking her along as a hostage. Mm. Carter won't dare try to stop us if we have her in the car. He won't dare. Yeah, that's a smart idea, boss. I'll wait for you at the corner of 9th and Livermore in a green and white taxi. Green and white. I'll bring the girl and pick me up there in 20 minutes. <laughs> There's the green and white cab, Benny. Pull over and stop. Okay. As, as long as you're making a getaway, why not let me go? Quiet, you. Oh. Is that you? Is that you, Slim? Yeah, boss. And we got the girl with us. You'll have to get out and help me. Have to help me, both of you. Now, come on, Benny. Something's wrong with the boss. What do you mean, wrong? Is he hurt? Well, I don't know, but... Hey, boss. What? He ain't in this cab. Keep your hands where I can see them. <laughs> and you and Benny both. <laughs> the cops! Yeah! And if either of you'd like to make a run for it, we'll show you that cops can use machine guns, too. Better drive a little faster, Chris. We don't want to miss our train. Uh, I'll get you there, pal. Nick, Pamphlet had an almost perfect setup, didn't he? Just about, Betsy. <laughs> Of course, no one ever suspected the city's most fanatical reformer. Well, not only that, Hanford actually helped plan the campaigns against himself so that he knew every move the police would make before they made it. Yeah, but there were some arrests and some gambling houses were closed. Ah, but never any of Hanford's. He used the police to wipe out his competitors only. Oh, uh, well, I guess he knew what he was talking about when he said Chief Ramsey wasn't very smart. Well, it was ideal for Hanford's purpose. Yeah. Everyone knew the chief was strictly honest. And yet it was easy for Hanford to make a fool of him. Tell me, Nick, how did you ever induce Hanford to put through that second phone call? The one that made Slim and Benny bring me to the place where you and the officers were waiting. Oh, that. I couldn't make him do that, Betsy. But he did it. Oh, no, he didn't. He... That was Chris, our impersonating cab driver here. It was? Yes, yeah, yes. that was me in the flesh. But, but if it was Chris, how did you know what number to call? I listened very carefully to Hanford's dialing when he made his phone call. Oh, and you counted the clicks so you knew what the number was. Right. So while the chief called out his men, I dashed down and got Chris, who was waiting in his cab at the entrance to the building. I told him what number to call, and he made the call in Hanford's voice. Well, I'll be darned. And don't, don't forget them producers, pal. <laughs> <laughs> I won't, Chris. They'll listen to you if I have to tie them down, and that's a promise. Yeah, gee, thanks. I'll do the same for you sometime. Uh, uh, the same for you. Oh, Nick, that really sounds a lot like Hanford. <laughs> Over the phone, it was close enough. It was the only thing I could think of that would be fast enough. And believe me, Chris gave a star performance. Uh, it was a cinch. Everybody in Center City knows that funny way old man Hanford talks. I told you I could impersonate anybody. Chris, you're wonderful. Hey, I got another one I want you to hear. Margaret O'Brien. Margaret O... Oh, oh, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Nick, what about the adventure new post-war old Dutch cleanser has for us next week? Well, Mike, it's a story of a girl who looked as if she'd never get a husband. And then when she did get one, she shot him. But Nick felt sorry for her, so he tried to send someone else up for the murder. You mean to say that Nick framed an innocent person for murder? Well, it's a long story, Mike. I'm afraid it'll have to wait till next Sunday. All right, but what do you call this adventure, Nick? I call it The Case of the Homely Bride. <laughs> Nick Carter, Master Detective, 
is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Today's script was written by Jim Parsons. Original music is played by Henry Silverne. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. With millions of additional children entering our schools during the next few years, the nation faces serious educational handicaps. Inferior education for our boys and girls may damage our prosperity, our traditions of freedom, our security. That's why we urge every adult to work with local civic groups and school boards to help improve educational conditions. Show by your interest and friendliness that you appreciate the importance of your children's teachers. They mold our nation's future. This is Michael Fitzmaurice saying, when minutes count, use new post-war old Dutch cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.